first day. Can we talk about our first day? Because what happens in that first day is something so extraordinary. I mean, a series of things that's so extraordinary that to understand yoga and what we're trying to accomplish in yoga, we have to understand what gets patterned in that very first day, what starts to get patterned. Because after all, what we're dealing with is our patterns. So, <clears throat> first day. It's the most eventful day you'll ever have. Physiologically speaking, there's no question. <laughs> Absolutely, there's nothing that could even come close to the transformation your entire system goes through on your first day. You started your first day like any other of those days and those nine months or so that you've been floating around there nice and happy on external life support. You're not breathing for yourself. You're not eating for yourself. You know, you don't have to worry about where the waste is going. It's all just one. No wonder people want to get back there. <laughs> yeah, it's the ultimate welfare state. <laughs> and you're just floating around, right? And then, and then something starts squeezing. <laughs> There is some downward apana that's starting to happen, you know? And it's the strongest downward apana that a human being could ever possibly experience. Not just you from the inside, but, you know, your mother. And you're getting pushed out of that nice, comfortable environment where there's no work, nothing to do, nowhere to go. And you're going somewhere. You're on your way out, you know? And, you know, you don't have any blood in your lungs when you're in utero. Well, there's a little bit. I mean, there's, there's bits of circulation, obviously, to keep the tissue alive. But, you know, there's, there's no pulmonary circuit going on. Uh, that's why you have a hole in your heart. There's a, there's a hole between the two sides of your heart when you're a baby. Because the lungs are being bypassed. The blood passes directly from one side of your heart to the other. It doesn't circuit through the lungs. Okay. And then it's weird. Everything's backwards. You know, the, the oxygenated blood that's flowing around in your body is going through your veins. And the deoxygenated blood is going through your arteries. And it's all coming in and out of here. That's about to change. Because you get squeezed out. You hit the air. And sometimes you get slapped in the butt. All right. And you take that first breath. Okay. This all, this all happens in like less than one second, what I'm about to describe to you. Think about it. <clears throat> okay, that first breath is the most powerful, transformative, significant breath you could ever possibly take. It's the most powerful because mechanically speaking, it's three or four times more mechanical energy that's required to get your lung tissue to do that first expansion than in a normal breath. Babies' lungs are quite stiff and inflexible. They have not been moving in utero, okay? That's why they need all that surfactant. Surfactant is this chemical that, that lowers the surface tension of your lungs, which is produced pretty late in intrauterine life, which is why premature babies have so much a harder time breathing. Because their lungs are very stiff. So you, uh, that first breath has to overcome that initial surface tension of the lungs. It also has to seal off that passageway in your heart, okay? It sends an enormous rush of blood into your lungs, which collapses the fetal circulation. Those vessels now start collapsing on themselves and eventually become the, the ligaments that hold up your organs. This all happens in one second. <gasps> and then you, everything reverses. Now you've got, you know, uh, oxygenated blood in your, in your arteries and, you know, the venous blood is in your veins. And uh, that's all in one second. Use your first breath. So life definitely starts with an inhale. You're not born with air in your lungs. It could not possibly start with an exhale. It starts with an inhale. All right. And you're breathing. Well, that's not the only form of nutrition <laughs> that you have to seek at this point. All right. You're not being fed anymore through your... What's this in Sanskrit? Pupic? That's no. <laughs> Navan, navel, through your navel. So the prana thing is happening with the breathing right away. But then 
the other prana thing, you know, the solid and the liquid, the semi-solid liquid that you're looking for, okay? It's, 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 it's a special kind of breast milk called colostrum. Where is it? It's not here. Where, it's somewhere, all right? And, you know, you don't have to crawl around and get it, thankfully. They'll take you right to it, okay? But you still, you've got to, you know, you don't just stick the nipple in the, in the baby's, you know, proper nursing technique. It's not just like that. You've got to let them find it. You've got to let the, the nipple stimulate the cheek, and you, you trigger what's called the rooting reflex. Some of you have seen it. And that reflex is there. That you're born with. But then you have to accomplish something. You have to accomplish your first feat of coordination. Okay? You're coordinating, sucking, breathing, swallowing. Oh, my goodness. You just learned how to breathe a few minutes ago. Now you have to coordinate it with sucking and swallowing. And if you don't, you're in trouble. You have what's called a failure to thrive. But most babies do it, and they're very happily sucking and bringing in all that nutrition, and it's a beautiful thing. They're, I mean, this is, you know, your most fundamental survival skills, the things you need to keep yourself alive, you're figuring out right at the very beginning. It's fantastic. And you're coordinating all of this, and you're sucking, and you're swallowing, and it's coming in, and coming in, and coming in, and eventually, you get pretty full. Well, yeah, I'm kind of rushing the I'm I'm rushing the agenda here. I'm just get, New York. Yeah, no. This is the way most of us were born. No, it's not. It's not just that. It's just a, it's a two-hour class, is what it is. Okay. Whether I was teaching this, you know, in California or the Himalayas, it's still going to be two hours. So, yes, there's more to that first day than that. I'm covering the key points as they relate to prana and apana. Thank you. But yes, taking in your mother's gaze—that's a form of prana too. Thank you. But we're in a bit of a hurry. <laughs> so you're filling up. You're filling up. And, you know, that creates some pressure. And it's uncomfortable. And what a baby does when it's uncomfortable is it cries. <laughs> there you go. Right? So... Seriously, no, seriously. This is about the entire respiratory mechanism getting involved in another coordinated action until finally, squeeze in, push down, <laughs> pain goes away. That's important. That's the first skill that we learn around apana. The peristalsis, that's happening all by itself. But the, the act of squeezing in and pushing down of all of these components of the respiratory system to relieve internal discomfort, we learned that on the first day too. Squeeze in, push down, pain goes away. We're going to remember that one. We're really going to remember that one. Because you know what? We don't just use it for poo. We use it for just about anything that arises inside of us that is uncomfortable, that we don't want to experience. So that goes back to this area here, this space. If I put my hand in there, are you just going to let it in? Or are you going to, it's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to, you're going to squeeze in, push down, and make the pain go away. Just stuff it. <laughs> Try and poop it out. You know, but you can't. Not all, the, not all the sources of discomfort that arise inside of us can be pooped away. But we use the poopy breath pattern to try. We really do. We do our best. We harden ourselves here a little bit. You know. And eventually, over the years, this pattern forms itself into a knot. A knot of tension. A fundamental knot of tension in the system. Why do I call it fundamental? Well, because the yogis call it fundamental, because they gave it the name Brahma. It's the knot of Brahma, the Brahma Granti. Is that in your notes? Good, so you don't have to ask how to spell it. The Brahma Granti. I submit that this pranayama that we engage in, this attempt to bring the prana and the apana into this balanced state of joining 
What that's really telling us is learn how to loosen the Brahma Granti. Learn how to create some space in the center of the system where these forces can relate to each other.